Hello, this is Jill at Ingvid, and today we have a lesson uh, which focuses on an article which I'm going to be reading to you and showing you on the screen. Okay, so this is from uh, the BBC website. Um, it's a different one from uh, some of the other articles we're looking at. Uh, this one is called BBC Future and it's a series of articles from different parts of the UK. So this is a rather interesting one um, that is all about some wartime bombs from the Second World War, uh, which ended in, in the 1940s. And there are still some bombs from the Second World War uh, that uh, as this says, the bombs that lurk off the UK coast. So these are bombs that are sort of in the sea, they're under the water, but they could explode at any moment. Um, so um, it's, of course, it could cause a lot of damage if some bombs suddenly started exploding. Uh, so this article is all about that. Okay, so on this picture, you can see a mast sticking up out of the water. Uh, and that's a ship that sank um, in the Second World War. And on that ship were um, a lot of explosives uh, and nobody has been able to do anything about it because it's so dangerous. And you can see this big yellow, um, thing floating in the water with the danger sign on it to, to tell ships not to come too close. Um, so, okay, so let's have a look at this title here, this uh, explanation. So, um, as it says, the World War II era, SS Richard Montgomery, so that's the name of the ship, sits just 1.5 miles, one and a half miles from shore, and locals fear that its 1,400 tons of potent explosives could go off at any time. So the, the journalist John Excel investigates. Okay, so I'm just going to increase the size here for the main text and just close that at the bottom. Okay, so let's have a look. So I'll just read this first paragraph. Okay, so here we go. Take a trip to the seaside town of Sheerness on Kent's Isle of Sheppey and a curious sight awaits you. A giant mural featuring a miserable looking mermaid. Uh, this is her just below here. Um, hand on TNT detonation plunger, poised to obliterate a shipwreck in the sea behind her. Welcome to Sheerness, you'll have a blast, reads the accompanying sign. So this is uh, Kent in the southeast of England, uh, and it's just to the east of London. So if you think of London with the River Thames flowing through it, Kent is the area just to the east of London going towards the English Channel on the other side of the sea from, from France. Uh, so the water here, it's partly sea, but it's also partly the River Thames flowing out to the sea. Uh, so that if that helps you to visualise where it is. OK, so Kent is on the south side of uh, the River Thames and, and the sea to the south of it. So um, this ship, you can see the masts sticking up on this picture here. Um, that's where all the explosives are under the water. Okay, and here's the mermaid, not looking very 
pleased, not surprisingly. Um, so there we are. That's the sign that welcomes visitors to the town. OK, so let me just go back because there are a few words to explain. So first of all, in the main title, uh, the, this word lurk may be a word that you may not be familiar with. So the bonds that lurk off the UK coast, uh, to lurk is to kind of to hide. So the bonds are hiding because they're underwater, you can't see them. And also lurking, it has a rather negative meaning, you know, sort of hiding, uh, waiting to come out and grab you or something. So it's that idea, the bonds are hidden, but they could cause a lot of trouble if they go off. So they're lurking and it's a sort of threatening um, idea, you know, something bad could happen. So that's lurk, okay, and people can lurk as well, you know, hiding behind a curtain or whatever, ready to jump out, um, things like that. Okay, so and then some words in this um, second heading, uh, I think maybe this word potent, uh, meaning powerful potent explosives. I mean, explosives usually are potent or powerful or strong. That's what it means. And to go off also means to explode. So there's a phrasal verb, to go off. It can be when something explodes. To um, It's a, a different word for that. Okay, so and then I think there are some words in this first paragraph as well. Uh, so the mermaid is poised. That means she's ready with her hand on the handle there to push it down and detonate the, the bombs. Poised to obliterate and obliterate means to destroy. Okay, a shipwreck. That's the ship there in the water. And then there's a joke here. Um, you'll have a blast. Usually when people say, oh, we had a blast, it means we had a really good time, fantastic time. We were laughing and joking. Uh, but of course, in this context here, the blast uh, is about uh, the blast of an explosion. So there's a double meaning there. So it's what you would call a pun or a play on words or word play or double meaning that um, it, it's, um, it has a funny, it makes you laugh because of the double meaning in the language. So you'll have a blast, uh, has two meanings there, having a good time or um, witnessing an explosion. Uh, so that's the joke in, in this poster here. Okay, so let's move on and read the next sentence. So, to visitors unfamiliar with the hazard lurking in the waters just beyond the town's sea wall, a terrorist mermaid is an undeniably bizarre piece of public art. So um, the hazard, another, another word for danger. Lurking, we've got lurking again, hiding away. Uh, just, it's just beyond, just near the town of Sheerness in Kent, be, beyond the town seawall. A terrorist mermaid is an undeniably meaning you can't deny that bizarre or strange, it's a very strange piece of public art because it's on display um, in public, in the open air for people to see. Uh, it does look quite strange. Um, so bizarre means strange 
um, OK. Then next sentence. But to locals, she's a chilling reminder of the wartime relic that some believe threatens the town and the lives of its inhabitants. The wreck of World War II era ammunition ship, the SS Richard Montgomery. So a chilling reminder. Chill means cold. So it makes you feel cold to think of um, the war itself, but also the possible threat that's, that's still there, the threat, the danger that the, this, uh, these explosives could go off and cause some damage. And the wreck, the shipwreck, the sunken ship that's sort of broken up under the water and the ammunition, the, the explosives, the weapons that were on that are on the ship. OK, so the next paragraph tells us uh, a bit more. The ship lies just 1.5 miles, 2.4 kilometers from shore in the mouth of the bustling Thames estuary. Uh, bustling means busy. You get a lot of ships coming and going up and down the Thames into London, out again. Um, clearly visible from the land, its rusting masts rising ominously from the water. The sunken vessel contains disturbing cargo, 1400 tons of high explosives, which many fear could go off at any time potentially causing one of the most devastating non-nuclear peacetime explosions ever seen. So all these years since the 1940s, these bombs have been just there under the water. Uh, they could go off at any time. So rusting masts, that's when anything metal starts to, to, to go brown and um, disintegrate a little bit um, so that the masts are sticking up ominously that means you know they look uh, dangerous um, and these are all the explosives that a lot of people many fear means many people fear could go off could explode at any time and devastating means it could cause a lot of damage. OK, so here's a picture of the ship before it sank. SS Richard Montgomery arrived in August 1944. OK, so next paragraph. Known semi-affectionately to locals as the Monty from Montgomery. Uh, the 441 foot long, 134 meter vessel was a US Liberty ship, a type of cargo ship used during World War II. So uh, US from the USA, from America. Um, it arrived off Britain's coast in August 1944, carrying munitions, weapons to help the war effort. On the 20th of August, while waiting to join a convoy across the Channel to France, harsh weather caused the ship to drag anchor and founder on a sandbank. So the ship was waiting to join a convoy, a group of other ships, to all go across the English Channel to France, to taking the weapons with them. But bad weather, harsh weather, um, meant the ship, uh, it, its anchor dragged on the bed of the sea and then the ship got caught up on a sandbank, um, a sort of raised bit of sand under the water. It got stuck and it couldn't get off again. It just got completely stuck there. Okay. So as the tide receded, the vessel was left stranded, stuck. 
The hull's welded plates began to crack and buckle under the weight of the explosives on board. So the hull is the body of the ship and the welded plates are the metal plates that are um, joined together and they started cracking and buckled, they um, sort of bending under the weight of all the explosives. So um, it, the shape of the ship changed and meant it, it was just impossible to bring it back up to, to float and to sail again. Okay, so local dock workers hurriedly mounted a salvage operation. They managed to empty the rear half of the ship before finally abandoning it on the 25th of September when the forward section flooded and the vessel snapped in half. So the local dock workers uh, mounted means they just organized um, a salvage operation, meaning to save as much of the contents of the ship as they could. And they did empty part of it, the, the rear half, the back part of the ship. Uh, they got some of the weapons off of the ammunition but then they had to give up, they had to abandon it, just leave it, they couldn't do any more. Uh, the forward part flooded, filled with water, and then the ship snapped in half, it broke in half. Okay, so there's a picture from that time um, where they're, they're out having a look, but they can't really do very much about it. So, since then, no one has been aboard the ship, at least not officially. And without any surviving records of what actually was removed in 1944, it's impossible to say precisely what cargo remains. So that people don't even know how much ammunition is still on there. Okay. However, estimates paint a worrying picture. According to a survey carried out in 2000 by the UK government's Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, the ship likely contains a staggering assortment of more than 9,000 US made explosives. So um, estimates paint a worrying picture, that's uh, a, an idiom um, a metaphor, uh, the estimates, the figures um, give people a picture in their mind of um, lots and lots of weapons on the ship. Okay, uh, and the staggering assortment of explosives, staggering uh, is usually when people stagger, they're sort of not being, they're not able to walk very easily. You might be staggering if you're carrying something heavy, for example. So staggering is the effect it has on you when you think about it. Oh, my goodness, all those weapons. Oh, my goodness, what would they do? So that's a staggering assortment. It sort of makes you think, oh, gosh, this is terrible. OK, so I'm just going to skip a little bit here, but um, um, I'd like you to read it yourselves in in your own time, if, especially if you're doing the quiz that comes at the end of this lesson, um, because there will be some questions based on the parts that I'm not reading. OK, so just to move on. Um, so there's another picture of the ship with the masts sticking up. Um, so let's just read this paragraph. Um, this one is quite important. So most agree, that's most people agree, that the bombs are relatively safe as long as they aren't exposed to sudden shock, friction or heat. But recent 
MCA surveys confirm the wreck is gradually disintegrating. Its deterioration could lead to a sudden collapse that triggers the sympathetic detonation of some, if not all, of the remaining explosives. So disintegrating and deterioration are, mean the same thing, really. Um, the, the ship is just sort of falling apart under the water. And if things start moving and collapsing, it could cause an explosion. If two things knock against each other, perhaps there could be a, an explosion which could make the whole thing explode, not just one bomb exploding, but it could trigger, meaning have a, you know, continuous effect on, on the other um, um, explosives as well. So that's the worst thing I think that could happen. Um, so some people are saying, uh, for example, if we look at this bit, it could hurl a column of debris up to 1.8 miles or three kilometers into the air. So it could go upwards into the air and send a tsunami barreling up the Thames. So a big wave going all the way up the Thames towards London and cause a shock wave that would damage buildings for miles around, including the liquid gas containers on the nearby Isle of Grain. So if you think liquid gas, uh, if, that was ex if that was going to explode as well, it could be a, di a disaster. Uh, so some people find it very worrying. So it's a scenario that keeps many, including local historian Colin Harvey, awake at night. And he says the remit area for the explosion would be from Margate to the centre of London. It would level Sheerness, it would just level, you know, devastate. Um, and a 30 or 40 foot wave would breach or break through sea defences. Sheppey's got a population of 25,000 people, where would they go? Um, so this is the worst thing that some people think could happen. Um, but then not everyone shares this apocalyptic view, this sort of end of the world type of view for the local area. Um, so let's just skip that paragraph. And this other person says the idea that if one item goes bang, then everything will is I think pretty unlikely unless you've got intimate contact between two munitions, two weapons, subsurface under the water, you'll rarely cause the other to detonate because water is a very good mitigator. The water actually stops some of the explosives from exploding. Okay. Um, so we'll just move on from there. This is an aerial view of Sheerness. And I think that there is the yellow um, danger sign. So I can't see the masts in the water, but I think that's possibly the yellow sign near the wreck. And this is the town of Sheerness itself. Um, okay. Um, so we'll just skip a little bit there. So that's for you to read in your own time, especially if you're doing the quiz. Um, so another thing is that passing ships have to be careful. Um, one concern is that the vessel could be struck by one of the many boats that pass close by every day. Um, uh, and from here, there are concerns that it's not as well protected as the authorities claim. Um, there have been at least 22 near misses over the last few decades. So some ships have almost hit. They've only just missed it over the last few decades, the last few 
10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Um, in one particularly dicey incident, uh, dicey, that means sort of difficult or tricky, um, a Danish fuel tanker strayed off course in poor weather and had to take last minute evasive action to avoid hitting the wreck. So a fuel tanker, a Danish ship carrying oil probably, uh, went the wrong way. They couldn't see probably where they were going in, in bad weather and then suddenly had to go the other way to get away from hitting the ship. Um, and then more recently, a paddle boarder, this is a person on a little, little paddle boat, I think, um, provoked an outcry, caused a lot of concern when he posted a photo of himself on Facebook, leaning against one of the vessel's masts. So somebody actually went right out to the wreck and got onto it, presumably and was leaning against uh, one of the masts, this one of these masts here. So that was a very uh, dangerous thing to do. Okay, so we'll just move down, I think, to this paragraph here. Uh, so let me read this one. So one thing that might hasten a solution would be a major infrastructure project like London Mayor Boris Johnson's proposal for a new airport in the Thames estuary. Uh, now, um, Boris Johnson is not the mayor of London anymore, as you probably know. Uh, at the time I'm filming this video, Boris Johnson is the Prime Minister of the UK. Um, but he was the mayor of London at one time, at the time this article was written. And he did have this crazy scheme for an airport in or on the Thames, on the River Thames, uh, but nothing came of it. It never happened. So um, I suppose they would have had to clear this ship away if they'd done that. But I mean, there's already a city airport to the east of London. I think it was a bit too much to expect to build another airport so near um, and people there are a lot of people who don't want more airports now because of global warming and so on uh, climate change so anyway yes uh, the airport commission said that before it could be built the wreck would have to be moved but with Boris Island, as it was being called, looking increasingly unlikely, at least for now, we could be in for a long wait. Uh, we could have to wait a long time, that means. And most, most people seem to agree that the longer the vessel is left, the harder it will be to deal with, uh, which I'm sure is true. It will just be breaking up into pieces more and more. Um, and as this guy says, we can't continue just leaving the wreck to fall apart. Somebody at some point in the next five to 10 years is going to have a very difficult decision to make. And I would say the sooner it's made, the easier and cheaper it will be as a solution. Okay. And so let's carry on. We're nearly at the end of the article. Um, it's hard to predict what will happen next to the SS Richard Montgomery. It's possible that nothing will happen, that the speculation will continue, and that today's generation will pass this volatile baton onto the next, relieved that it hasn't blown up on their watch. Uh, so just to explain a few words here, speculation, that's just people talking about it and not doing anything. And today's generation will pass, uh, well, volatile means something that could explode. 
Um, but to pass the baton means to hand something on to another person. Uh, it comes from, uh, I think, relay racing in athletics, where they pass a, an actual baton or stick to another runner. Um, one person's running along, they, they're holding a stick and they pass it into someone else's hand and then they carry on running with the baton. So it's the idea of one generation passing the problem onto the next generation and relieved that it hasn't blown up on their watch, meaning relieved it hasn't blown up when it was their responsibility. So, um, but that's been going on for years now. Um, and then the final sentence, um, but for the people of Sheerness, there is always the terrifying possibility, however remote, that one day soon, decades of inaction will come back to haunt us. So the possibility, which is terrifying, even if it's remote, meaning it might never happen, but one day, decades of inaction, 10, 20, 30, 40 years of doing nothing, more than 40 years really, um, will come back to haunt us. Uh, to haunt is that's what ghosts do. If you believe in ghosts, um, ghosts haunt buildings and they haunt people. Uh, so it's something from the past that's a bit frightening. Um, so this is also something from the past that, that's a bit frightening when you think about it. Um, if that explosion ever happens in the Thames uh, off the coast of Kent, um, it will, well, it'll feel worse than being haunted probably. Um, people will then say, why didn't anybody ever do anything about this? You know, but we can see what a difficult situation um, it's been over the years. Okay, so I hope that's been an interesting article for you. And I do rec uh, recommend this uh, BBC um, website. It's a particular one called bbc.com forward slash future, uh, which looks at, um, it gives you stories from different parts of the UK. Um, so I do recommend it and um, recommend that you do uh, read articles um, uh, good quality articles like this one help to helping to increase your vocabulary and uh, and if you can read aloud as well that's always good practice too okay so um if you'd like to go to uh, the quiz um, and answer some questions on this article. Do read the whole article in full first um, because there, there could be questions on some of the sections I haven't covered. Uh, so I know you all like to get 10 out of 10. So, um, you know, make sure you get the best chance of doing that. Okay. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and see you again soon. Okay, bye for now. Bye.